Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to Unique Ways with Thomas Gerard, an audio podcast. We've got an awesome guest on today. She's a first-generation Brazilian-American product designer, most recently working on end-to-end -end design experiences at AMP, a new live radio app by Amazon Music. Uh, previously, she worked on creator tools at Pinterest as the org's first-ever product design apprentice. Please join me in welcoming Amy Lima. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Tomas. Super excited to be here. My pleasure. Are you ready for 20 questions? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Question one, tell me a little bit more about yourself. What do you do? Yeah, so, you know, you you kind of spoke to a, a little bit uh, in the intro, right? So, you know, product designer by trade, you know, most recently working at Amazon Music. Before then, I was at Pinterest. But outside of work, I'm really just another human finding my place in the world, right? So I am a first-generation American by way of Brazil, uh, my parents immigrated to the States as teens in the 70s, and they're both small business owners. So they own and operate a small metal factory. So very blue collar manufacturing environment that I grew up in. Um, so this means I, I was raised in a pretty interesting context, right? So on one hand, with the disadvantage of being sort of isolated uh, from my extended family and without generational context of growing up in America, but on the other with the advantage of being resourceful, very community oriented, and uh, just always thinking outside of the box. That's just kind of how I, I learned to operate from an early age. So this ethos really translates to, you know, my day-to-day -day work, um, you know, my personal life, and then also, you know, professionally, also my advocacy work for marginalized voices in the industry. I founded Diversify Design, which is a community supporting designers from underrepresented backgrounds through education events, uh, relationship building, career workshops, that sort of thing. And I also founded Frame to Table, which is a supper club for female designers across cities in the U.S. We launched in New York and will soon be expanding to other cities, which is really exciting. So creating these inclusive spaces where folks feel seen and connected is kind of my way of giving back to the community and refueling my day-to-day -day work. Great. Um, just a quick note for the audience. Amy and I don't know each other until now, but uh, I, I think she came through. I think, I think you came through my LinkedIn feed, and you know, LinkedIn Premium has been such a kind of miraculous tool for me to be able to connect with possible guests. So, uh, so happy um, to have that at my disposal. Um, so, question two: What's a key piece of knowledge that makes you different? Yeah. So, you know, this isn't, of course, isn't like entirely unique to only me. Right. But I really do think my my first gen immigrant background makes me um, pretty unique in that I'm very culturally aware and attuned to people's individuality. Um, so I'm really from my earliest age, I've been constantly uh, confronted with the fact that the world is much bigger than myself and my tiny little bubble. Right. And there are many different mental models for a healthy and fulfilling life. So that really informs how I go about my own life and my work, uh, my relationships with others and really everything in between. So really that kind of like broad cultural um, awareness, I would say. Great. Okay. Um, number three, why this of all things, why do you do what you do? So I really got into this field because of my appreciation for just the breadth of human experience, right? So I'm just endlessly fascinated by how people, um, how and why people and things behave the way they do. Um, and I'm really kind of tapped into the nuances of those expressions. So you know, I was always the type of person to ask why, 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 like probing deeper into, you know, people would be satisfied with just one answer. And I would always want to dig a little bit more, always this very inquisitive, uh, you know, curious sort of mindset. Um, and that just happens to lend really well to the design field. I have to, it's just kind of the perfect medium for me to realize how um, leverage rather, how my brain has sort of always, always worked. Great. Okay. Some people struggle with number four, but the question is, what does your future look like? You know, yeah, that is a tough question. I'd like to say that I'm intentionally unsure of what it looks like. And I, I kind of like keeping it that way. I think it's important to, you know, live your life with intention and purpose and, you know, have, have a goal, like really know what it is you want on, you know, I guess like a, maybe like a macro level, but 
I kind of like to leave things a little open-ended and leave some things open to, you know, chance and fate and just the universe doing its thing. So I know where I'm at today, maybe, you know, what's happening tomorrow or a little farther into the future, but, you know, the grand future, I don't know. Um, but I hope I'm happy. I hope I'm healthy. I hope I'm producing or still creating rather is the better word. Um, just meaningful work for myself and for others. Um, and yeah, when I think of the future, that's kind of what I what I think about, just the feeling around it rather than what it actually looks like. Great. Okay. Um, so we're recording on my side from Vancouver, Canada, um, but of course we can connect all over the world now uh, through the platforms. Um, so the question is, let's talk about location. How does the notion of place play into what you do? Yeah. So in my design work, um, I really think a lot about the full context in which a user might engage with the product I'm building, um, very specifically kind of like the time and place that they're in, right? So I really just always advocate for meeting users where they're at, whether that's the physical place they're in or the mental one. So yeah, really think of places um, not only like a, you know, a literal, um, you know, manifestation, but also a more, um, a more abstract feeling, you know? Perfect. Um, if you had to start from the beginning, what advice would you give your former younger self? Yeah, this is a great one. Um, I think I'd say, trust your instincts, trust the process and just embrace your own unique journey. Um, I spent a lot of time fighting against the trajectory and pace of my life, candidly, which not only made the experience a lot more painful, um, whereas even when it, in moments where it could have been uh, a little fun and exciting, but also slowed me down, right? Just that crippling self-doubt and, you know, worried about other people's perceptions. Um, you know, today I'm a really big believer in what's meant for you will not pass you by. Um, so yeah, maybe don't be be hard on yourself and just enjoy the ride a little bit more. Love it. Number seven, what's a day in your life like? Yeah, so that's an interesting question for this particular moment in my life because I'm very recently laid off, right? So that's presented a really meaningful challenge for me to really find a balance between productivity and rest. Um, so right now that looks like establishing some sort of structure in my days while leaving some room for just spontaneous play and rejuvenation. Um, so during the week, I block off dedicated portions of my day for admin work and job searching, um, also skill building, and also going to the gym, just like physical activity. So this way, I have time to be productive and make progress in my job hunt, while also exploring my creativity through personal projects and courses, and also giving myself, you know, the sort of dedicated, what I call time off <laughs> at the gym, um, you know, kind of like an act of recovery where I can reset my body and brain. So really just trying to establish boundaries um, against working over the clock and on weekends. Um, and especially on weekends, I use that time to see friends and just totally relax. But on any given day, I'm trying to give myself time and space to reflect and rest, basically. Great. Okay. Approaching halfway here. Number eight, lifelong learning is a popular topic. How do you stay up to date? Yeah, I mean, it can definitely feel very overwhelming. I at times feel overwhelmed um, just trying to stay on top of everything you can possibly be upskilling in, especially in the domain of design and just wider tech. I mean, it's literally impossible to learn it all, no matter how much you try. Um, and I really just let social media, my network and my own personal interests guide me. Um, so between, you know, the algorithm, like you said, you know, things like LinkedIn premium can be like a massive, like unlock uh, just word of mouth and my own curiosities, I'm able to come across topics and courses that interest me. And I really think that if you let your interests be your compass to guide you rather than what's trendy, you know, what people are buzzing about in any given moment, you'll always find new, meaningful and innovative uh, frontiers to explore. So for me right now, that's visual and AI design. Um, I'm learning French. I'm trying to learn how to run. I'm picking up dancing again. So all very different domains, but uh, with all with the same common thread of challenging myself and, and really honing in on a craft. Great. Number nine, what tools do you use? Are you both digital and analog? Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I didn't really know if this question was more, you know, kind of like 
my tech stack, which I keep very intentionally light, right? So like I design in Figma, I use tools like Superhuman and Cron, which are just like, you know, like just elevated, but basic tools, right? Mm -hmm. Calendar, email, scheduling, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I stick to Google Docs and Apple Notes to document my thoughts. Um, You know, I try to keep it as uh, simple as possible, um, just to try to stay nimble and flexible when I am traveling. So I can work from anywhere. So again, I'm a very global um, distributed person, uh, not explicitly a nomad, but my family and the places I call home are spread across three continents. So I do travel often um, and would love to explore being, you know, a more nomadic lifestyle, um, maybe one day in the future. But for now, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of planted in New York mostly. And yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, don't don't think too much about the tools I use. I'll be honest. Like I'm always like an early adopter of like, you know, new and creative tools that come out, be it uh digital or analog. I do have a lot of like fun little analog tools. I mean, you know, I love my like physical alarm clock. I try to avoid using, you know, my phone in bed and kind of, you know, bringing that into that space. Like there are some, you know, physical products that I love as well, but in general, I'm I'm trying to be as minimalist as possible these days. Wait, okay, so we're exactly halfway here. Number 10, how do you deal with work-life balance? Yeah, that's a really big one. Um, I often tell myself, and this is these are the words of Vivian Castillo, who's the founder of Humanity Centered, which is one of my all-time favorite design organizations. She's brilliant. Um, and she always says, I am more than what I produce and my rest requires no apology. Um, and that just really resonates with me. I, I always need to be reminded of that. I think in a world that demands and places inherent moral value on just constant and endless output, slowing down can really feel like an act of defiance, right? But really just reminding myself that I'm a full human outside of work really helps recenter myself. Um, and if I weren't doing what I'm doing now, um, I think I'd be traveling the world and maybe writing a, writing a screenplay. I've never said that out loud, but I think it's a lifelong dream of mine. Um, and I kind of, yeah, see that being the final frontier. I'm a writer at heart, very visual storyteller. Um, and I kind of see that, yeah, in my not so distant future. Great. I love it. Um, if you weren't doing what you do now, what would you be doing? Oh, I think I just answered that. I got ahead of us. Sorry, I had it written down here. It was Um, two questions in one. (laughs) uh, What would you not like to do with your career? What would I not like to do with my career? That's a good question. Um, I would like to not, or I would not like to stay still, kind of just like in every sense of that word. So Mm. um, I just never want to get too comfortable with where I'm at or what I'm doing. Um, A meaningful life for me really means just constant challenge and growth. I really find that I I crave that sort of variety and stepping outside of my comfort zone. So I guess said another way, my goal is to avoid complacency for as long as I can, hopefully forever. Um, But yeah, even like in like my day-to-day work, that doesn't necessarily mean like job hopping or changing careers. And it, it doesn't even need to be this big thing, but just, you know, finding meaningful challenges, even in like the the small day-to-day moments, you know, even if that's in my current role, like how can I build on this or expand? How can I collaborate with someone new? How can I learn something new, even in the space I'm in? Um, just kind of pushing, constantly pushing myself that way. Nice. And 13, what's your favorite word, quote, or sentence? Yeah, favorite. This one was hard. This one was a hard one to think about and narrow down on. Um, I have to go with Maya Angelou's uh, all-time banger. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Mm. So I really try to live my life by this quote and honor it in my work as well. I think that the details of what you create only matter as much as what they compound to, right? How people feel around the product, um, how they feel about you, how they feel about themselves when they interact with it. Um, And of course, in like personal life as well, just always being mindful of how I treat people and how I, you know, um, just show up in the world, you know, leading with kindness and, and all that stuff. Nice. And some people skip number 14, but the question is, what's your least favorite word quote or sentence? 
yeah, I, you know, this one took me a while to like meditate on, but um, then the the answer came to me because this is like something that I, I speak about often. I really don't love uh, the sentence, you don't owe anyone anything. Um, it's become like very, very popular lately. I think that this, this is like my hot take. I think this sort of hyper individualism you know, that sort of like guys as self-care is misguided at best and actively harmful at worst. I think that we owe each other the bare minimum, um, compassion and empathy, even to complete strangers. Um, I don't think this means you have to tolerate others' behavior, especially if it doesn't align with your values or what you want to hold space for in your life. But I think having compassion and setting a boundary are not mutually exclusive. I think you can be kind to others while still honoring yourself. So that's something I, I think about because I hear it thrown around a lot and I'm like, mm, don't love that. <laughs> nice. Um, if you had to pick one word to describe yourself, what word would you choose? Yeah, this was a hard one. Um, I'm going to go with, it's kind of a weird one, but I, I almost want to say warm. I, I want to feel like a, a warm person, someone who just like feels light to be around, um, you know, just radiates a kind of like, I don't know, the ethereal equivalent of a hug, um, mm. you know, both like, again, like personally and professionally and the people I interact with and like my personal life, day-to-day -day relationships, like I want to feel inviting and welcoming and safe to people um, and equally in, you know, professional setting in my, you know, design practice, just what I create, I want it to to radiate that feeling of, you know, comfort and warmth and just a source of energy and healing. Great. And what keeps you up at night? Um, what keeps me up at night? I mean, candidly, these days, quite a lot. I'll, I'll admit, I'm, it's really tough for me to tune out, um, you know, just all the I mean, we, we, you know, it's 2023, right? We've been living in unprecedented times. I mean, me as a millennial for like most of my life, but, you know, particularly in the past, like uh, four or so years, um, it's pretty exhausting. And I'll admit like most current global um, events have been keeping me up at night lately. I think there's a lot of pain and suffering and just harm in the world right now. Um, and it's, yeah, I think it's a pretty pretty common feeling these days, especially, yeah, among millennials, younger generations, everyone really, it's hard not to feel um, a little hopeless and helpless in that, you know, like wanting to be an instrument of change and doing what you can, but, you know, kind of being in decision paralysis, like, well, what do I do? I find myself kind of spinning in circles, um, thinking of how to be a better ally, a better advocate, a better um, activist, community member, um, all of these things. So yeah, kind of a, kind of a heavy, heavy answer, but I would say just, yeah, generally the state of the world is kind of, kind of weighing on me these days. Great. And approaching final stretch here, number 17, what's a dream you're chasing? Um, I guess just creating a legacy for myself, really. Um, and I really do mean for myself because there isn't any external motivation there. Um, just this kind of burning desire to create something innovative, beautiful, and lasting that'll exist long after I cease to, right? Um, I don't know what that looks like yet. I have some ideas. Um, so I'm just spending my time chipping away at the abstract thoughts uh, to get closer to realizing them. Great. And what inspires you? What inspires me? I think anyone who creates something from nothing. Um, I think it takes a lot of bravery, boldness, and just audacity, right? To walk into the unknown with the intention of leaving your mark. I mean, kind of ties into legacy, right? Yet people do it every day. Like it's insane to me. It's so hard. It's so scary. Mm. And this is like literally what's happening in our world, like constantly. Um, and I think that kind of spirit is contagious and it really energizes me to just get up every morning. And that's when things are going well. Um, and really like just rise from the ashes when they aren't. So yeah, that, that really, um, really fuels me. Great. And last couple here, number 19, any advice you'd like to share? Any advice you'd like to share? Um, I think just 
Yeah. In the spirit of other things we we talked about that have been on my mind lately, I guess just be kind to yourself and be kind to others. I think it goes a really long way. Um, and I've seen, you know, just, I mean, it seems so simple, but just kind of radiating kindness and just genuine, um, you know, goodwill and that kind of spirit um, just really like 10 X is your life, not only in like, you know, how you personally feel, but also just even professionally, you know, that's worked out really well for me connections and, you know, people wanting to extend a helping hand, especially now I find myself in a time of need, you know, in between jobs and, you know, a whole community, a whole village of folks rising up and, you know, kind of giving back just by virtue of me having done the same when I didn't need to right? I think it costs nothing to be kind. Um, but also extending that same grace to yourself when things are hard, um, you know, when you find yourself in a, in a vulnerable place, a vulnerable moment. So yeah, I think the world could use a little more of that. So I'm going to go with just spread, spread and radiate, radiate kindness. Um, everyone needs it right now, yourself included. Perfect. And the one everyone waits for number 20, how can our listeners keep tabs on you? What's our call to action today? Yeah, so I'm uh, on most socials, right? Most active on Twitter and Instagram um, and more active still through Diversify Design, which again is my community supporting designers from underrepresented backgrounds. So gonna be rolling out many more virtual and in-person events under Diversify Design, bringing in industry leaders um, and lots of opportunities to connect um, with your peers and also like upskill and, you know, build connections, share stories, really exciting stuff in the works. So best place to keep tabs on me would probably be either LinkedIn or Twitter um, and definitely Diversify Designs uh, LinkedIn, which will be much more active in the coming weeks. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining today. You know, um, such a pleasure to uh, build out the New York aspect of the show. We're having more and more people from your area um, join. So that's that's a big win. Um, but also to hear about your your kind of good hearted, you know, spreading kindness ideas. I think these are uh, really needed and uh, definitely on board with uh, with those ideas. So thank you so much. Absolutely. I appreciate the space and opportunity to chat today and your really thoughtful questions. I really liked kind of meditating on them and speaking on them today. So thank you for that. Thanks so much.